Hey guys, it's uh, Joe and Isaiah from The Automator here, and we were working on this really, really interesting thing with our help for AutoHotKey, and Isaiah was, first he was using a browser call, but then I said, let's, let's do a 1 HP request, an API call, and we yeah. really ran our, into this really weird conundrum, and I want to demonstrate it. Before I do, if you can, please like this video. It's always great because we get more views if we, it's like, so please like it. Um, Isaiah, why don't you go ahead and uh, share your screen here? Yeah, sure. Now... What uh, we have a lot of code that has to do with this is the code that I'm using for creating the help GUI and stuff. And usually what I was doing is was just creating kind of like an iframe for some documentation stuff. Now, uh, we decided let's try and just do the HTTP request. And this is something that threw me off a little bit. So this is my original uh, uh, HTTP request. Just creating the object, going ahead and grabbing a specific page on the documentation. And if you run this, you get a done message box, which I have here, and my clipboard should contain the web page, which is working perfectly fine. Now, due to something that I was doing before, which is kind of like uh, I was doing a comparison between two strings, I was formatting the strings to be lower cased. Okay, so everything that I was passing to my HTTP object here was in lower cases as shown in this other example. So the difference here is that GUI here has a capital letter and here has a lowercase letter. Now that created this little issue in which when I run the script, it says the operation was canceled and it is just on the send command. Now we, we went ahead and we started looking at the, at the headers. The headers were all the same. Uh, you know, everything was perfectly norm normal. And uh, I was not understanding what was going on. And something that I tried very quickly was, uh, let me go ahead and do this one here, is that I tried on the browser setting up a lowercase because I was sure that the browser automatically redirects you to the correct site. And... Again, it is something that you pointed out. It seems to me that the browser is something uh, doing something automatically that I am not doing. So if I go ahead and uh, parse this again, you will see that it does a few calls. One of them is the one that I requested, but the second one has the correct uh, uh, content. Now, on my first request, I did notice that one of the response headers uh, might be the location of the document. So probably the browser, when gets this response, gets this URL instead and goes ahead and creates another uh, uh, browser request, but now with the correct URL, which in our case, our script is not doing. Whenever I do my send, I probably get something in the headers, uh, and remember, this thing is not um, is doing trying to do some uh, uh, automatic redirection, well, right? Right. And this is something interesting that when you when you told me, like, let's go ahead and try with the option uh, six, six, I think it was, and set it to false. Right. This now uh, gets the message box done, but. I do not get any any uh, response text. That's because my first request does not return an HTML body. If, and you can see it, if I go to my request here, my response is empty because there is nothing there. It, it just responded with some headers. So probably my script, what should do is that if there is nothing in the response text, I, I should set it to false and manually do the redirect if the response is empty, I would look for the location header right. and then do uh, 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 um, an open request on that instead. Maybe that's what the browser is doing, but this is actually very interesting. If you are going ahead and you're having some kind of issues, especially this weird issue, like really the operation true. has been canceled, that, that, that there is no information there as, as to what happened. Uh, so probably you might want to take a look at uh, the headers and probably in our case, uh, disable the redirection, which is the solution, and then get the response headers by HTTP. Which, uh, dot, 
response headers or something like that. Maybe you should get that. And in there, in the location header, then just go ahead and do uh, a, a request on whatever you get in the location header. Right. And years ago, this is when Jackie and I were doing something on LinkedIn, which, of course, you're not supposed to do because they, they don't allow that. But we had a really hard time until we added that option six to pause the redirect and look at what actually was. So the WinHP request would reach out to the server. The server would yes. actually, you know, send back something different. And then, which is, this is where the really confusing part is, right? The WinHP request would do the next one because it, it, um, we would want yeah, to think that it exactly. doesn't. Because in the example that you just outlined at the beginning of this video, we're like, hey, it doesn't follow up. You know, it was it was breaking and it wasn't actually giving us the yeah, right thing. It, the, the browser yes. is smart, doing something to, to intelligently to get us to the right one. Um, so you would think the WinHP yes. request actually doesn't act on it, but it, it actually does send another request on its own. <laughs> it just wasn't a smart request, right? It wasn't sending back the right. Right. It is, it is actually exactly. So basically this uh, example here where I have lowercase is trying to send two or three requests. And we could see that in Fiddler, if we set right. it up, we will be able to see two requests and then it, it will be canceled because it's not the correct request. Yeah. Now, and that was the browser. Yeah. The browser is actually noticing that there is no HTTP stream coming back and it's saying, hold on. There's nothing here. Let me go ahead and double check where I'm supposed to go. And it's doing that for you with the, without you even realizing it. Yeah. And, and, um, just to point it out, <clears throat> when I, when I looked at this years ago, it was Fiddler that really tipped us off to go, well, wait a minute here. We did this call. Why are, where are these other calls happening from? Right. And noticing that traffic, <laughs> yeah. but I, it, it surprised me. And actually what it boiled down to is exactly what you said earlier too. If you don't have that option six in here, you, there's no right. way to get the right the, to get the header we're looking for because it's already gone. By time you you access right. it, so, so, it's gone. Yeah. So you have. So to by the on. time this guy does the send yeah. here, uh, it gets some headers and it tries to send them again and then it fails. Yeah. But you're you're not able to do anything. Right. But if you do up, have the option six around, so if you have that. Right. As soon as you do the, as soon as it makes the first request, it stops and then it lets you continue with whatever you're supposed to do. In that case, I would perform a check. If this is empty, then I would do another request based on the location header and so on. But uh, this is one of those situations in which, uh, having the correct, uh, URL is what was causing the issue. I do not have the correct URL. And my script in this case is not doing anything to alleviate that problem. It, and, and I know you mentioned earlier, but the other two things that kind of threw us at the beginning was the, the response was so fast, you know, the, the, um, invalid, not invalid. What did it say? The, uh, the error. <laughs> yeah. That, it was so fast. Yes. It really felt like it never even got sent. It's like you click the button. Right. Exactly. Says, I was like, yeah. what, what happened? What, why, right. why is it even canceled in the first yeah. place? And, and then the problem is that you do not get much information about it, uh, here, but, uh, this is kind of like one way of you to try to understand what is going on, uh, going to the browser using Fiddler to verify what the headers are or what is going on. And that's how we were able to figure out uh, yeah. in the end. And, and funnily enough, in your computer, in your computer was working right. when, when I pass you the, the, the URL. But the problem is that I copy pasted it from the browser. So the URL was the correct one. That's hilarious. So I passed it. I was like, how I ended up with the right one. I'm like, it works fine for me. And then he looked at it and was yeah. like, wait a minute. <laughs> that, there's the difference. Yeah. There is a difference. It's just one letter that is not in the correct case. And that was it. That's what is breaking uh, the HTTP request in this case. Wow. Yeah, uh, amazing. Very interesting. <laughs> but I hope that this helps you guys kind of understand what you're doing and do API calls and just troubleshooting, right? Of when when you are trying to get in somewhere and you can't, you're getting uh, either 300s or 400s or 500s. You know, there's something wrong. Um, this this is one thing to throw in there. It's one of my first things I'll do is just say let's let's throw in that option and stop the redirect and see if that 
<laughs> yes, and and just to clarify, those numbers that you were referring to is the status code here. Uh, you could actually just look at it um, as uh, a message box here. And that is uh, interesting because now the funny thing is that I will not get this this far. Okay, so I will not get this far. I, the the object itself is going to return an error before right. I get to the status. So I will not be able to see it here. That's one of the, it is a little bit difficult to troubleshoot this particular error because you do not know what is going on. Uh, and the first thing, if you get this error, the first thing I would try is go ahead and set up the option, HTTP.option6 uh, and set it to false, which is setting up the redirect uh, to false, not, do not follow redirections. And you will see that the status code now is 301. This 301 means that the, the, the document was moved or was uh, it is in a different location. And that's where you would want to get the, the headers. So probably uh, uh, head response headers, maybe response headers. And that would give you kind of like a little, I don't remember what was the name. Uh, I will take a look at that in a second, but basically you can get the, the, the response headers for the HTTP object and you will see more or less what, um, right. where the location of the correct document is. Yeah, for you to go ahead and all response it. headers would, would give you the, um, everything. Yes, it would give them all to you in one, uh, big, uh, like text. I would. Right. Just go ahead and do this. Uh, but there is a way to specify, and, um, like just get location. Yes. Get yeah, so right now I just, uh, here we go. Response stream, status text. Uh, oh, so this one doesn't have the response headers. No, this is just the text like moved. That should say moved permanently. Yeah, that's what it is. So just yeah, the in general, <clears throat> throw in the get all response headers. Ah, here, that's a method. Okay, get all response headers. That's a method. Right. Ah, there we go. So this is the one that I was looking for. And, and there's location you right there. The location here. And this top. location will that's contain the correct, right. So you could go ahead and get that and parse it. Uh, well, if you yeah. get a 301 or something, you should manually parse it and... Uh, yeah, and there's a way to get response header and say get this just this one, so you wouldn't even have to do that. Just that one? I don't have it in front of me. Yeah, yeah, here it is. Like, yeah, get response header. Yeah. And probably I should just put location there, maybe? Yeah, in, in yeah, left paren, double quote, right paren, after it, yeah. I believe so. Probably something like that. Yeah, there you go. So now you have that. Uh, if, if you get a 301, so if status, if http.status equals 301, which is kind of like that it moved, then just get the location for that and just open that again. So we will open a get for that. This should, in the end, work for me. Yeah, you just read. So, oh. right. So now I'm just wouldn't... opening whatever the location is and then just HTTP.send. And that, in the end, should give me a uh, message box, HTTP.response, response, uh, text, probably, should give me something. There you go. So this is, again, it, it, and I remember, oh, because it does that twice. <laughs> when I was uh, looking at the at the traffic, for some reason. Uh, yeah, there were several in, calls, in, right? Right. So it was, it was a few moves, as you can see. So you get this status here like several times. Probably what you want to do in this case is just while. A while loop. So while you get that, while the status is 301, so every time you get that, then just get the next location up to the point where you would get the web page completely. You see that? So instead of doing an if statement in this case, I would just, while you continue redirecting me, then just get the new location uh, to the point where I would get the response that I'm actually looking for. And, but this is when you have this part here that you set the uh, do not redirect. Uh, 
Right. So if you set this to not redirect, then I would suggest you using a while loop to move how many times they move you to the new location. And then you just go ahead and uh, have your web page in the app. So this is how you would smartly <laughs> go to the correct location, right? Uh, but yeah, I think this is the solution to this little problem. Oh, or get the correct URL <laughs> the first time, one of, right. <laughs> one of both, right? <laughs> yeah, but that's it, you know. Awesome. All right. Thanks, man. Bye. You're welcome. Hey, thank you for watching that video. And if you just enjoyed that, you probably aren't at a beginning level. And I highly recommend you work through the intermediate auto hockey course. You can see the URL over my head here, which will give you a coupon discount. And you learn a lot of, you know, more advanced things of working with controls, loops, and functions, and objects. There's a lot of great stuff with file paths and, and then what you can do. AutoHockey is an amazing tool. The uh, Having the course will help you have a direction of where to go and a, and a flow and a work through. Because otherwise, we kind of learn AutoHockey here and there, and it gets to be a big ball of mess. Um, so the, our, having the course helps you make sure you work through it in a, in a systematic way. I hope you enjoy it. Cheers.